So in this video, we're going to talk about how to set the air pressure on uh, these Technica guns. I had a question about that on YouTube, so we're going to go over that. Uh, this is a live Q&A. Now, I was going to start doing these live Q&As earlier in the year, but I didn't have a good enough internet connection. I was having problems, uh, just upgraded. So this, we'll see how this goes. And also, I tried to uh, kind of set that note or set it to a uh, uh, to to play, you know, like a little later, so maybe it would notify you. You know, I'm still working on all that, so I just had to go live. So I'm still kind of working on trying to figure out all this, uh, how, how to use live properly. It seems like when you when you do figure something out on, on YouTube, you know, you go back to it again and they've changed something. So, you know, there's always a lot of changes on there. So, and I'm not the most uh, internet savvy person to begin with. So, so anyway, uh, the question that I got on YouTube uh, comes from uh, Kurt Thacker. It says, I'm only halfway through through video, through the video, it might cover it, but what PSI do I want the gun for base coat and then clear coat? Thank you for all your help. Just subscribed. So, uh, Kurt, um, you know, that's going to kind of depend uh, on the spray gun that you're using, but the video that you, you was watching, I believe we was spraying a, a uh, Jeep on there, and I believe we was using this ProLite. So I'm going to talk about that one first. And then I'm going to talk about a base coat gun that they have. And they also have a clear coat gun that you that you can use as well if you want dedicated guns for each uh, application. Now, that's not to say you can't use one gun for, you know, base coat and clear coat. Uh, if you're just doing a few jobs, that's probably going to be what you want to do. But if you're uh, painting all the time, it's probably going to be a good idea to have a, you know, like a dedicated spray gun for everything you do, you know, base coat. You know, maybe waterborne base coat, uh, solvent base, maybe have a dedicated gun for clear coat, of course, primer, which is going to use, you know, a bigger nozzle and everything. So, but the guns I'm going to be talking about are HVLP. And um, this first one is the one I think, think we was using. This is a ProLite Series Technica or Techna. And uh, these are really good guns. Uh, you know, I did a survey on, on a, YouTube here a while back, you know, which they prefer, you know, had a, this one on there, you know, Develvis, you know, the Techno is by, by Develvis. Uh, also had like a, a Wada, which we use as well. I like a Wada too, but uh, Sada, you know, some of those guns. But this is a lot less expensive than a, a Wada or a Sada spray gun. And uh, it was actually, you know, more people preferred this than any other gun. So, you know, it works pretty good. So as far as the PSI on this one, you might notice on some of their air caps, they say, uh, like this one does, it says a uh, max inlet. I can't, I don't know if you can see that. But anyway, it says max inlet of 24 PSI. And uh, that is not necessarily want to set the gun. So I got the technical data sheet on that. Just to kind of go over that air setting part portion of that. Okay, so this is the pro light gun here. And the thing about HVLP spray guns, if you're using HVLP, you know, most paint manufacturers will recommend 10 PSI at the air cap. But, you, you know, you, you don't have a gauge up here. They have gauges you can buy for them, but you usually have the gauge, you know, down here. So it's going to, depending on the gun, some of them will require more PSI at the inlet to get the 10 PSI here than other guns, but there's kind of a, a broad range you can work from. But let's go over this uh, this ProLite, and we'll talk about that using, and this is the uh, HV30, you know, that's the H, high volume, low pressure 30 nozzle on there, so fluid tip, air cap. Um, so on here, I've got a sheet here, and, and uh, on these uh, technical data sheets, it will give you all that, you know, the pressure that you should use and this is what i'm referring to and you know it'll also go over the steps of how to set this gun up you know uh if you're having problems it'll go over that i mean it's a pretty good uh document they have and i will put that down in the description of course if it's not going to be there right now but come back maybe tomorrow after i can come back and edit this video i'll come back and put uh put this description in there so or this uh a link where you can get to this manual for this uh 
Prolite. But it says on here um, for HV30, and that's what we're using, uh, it says 20 to 24. So it said max 24, but you've got a range to play with 20 to 24 PSI at the inlet right here. And uh, so you have some room to play there to get the setting that uh, works best for you. Now, if you're spraying and, and your fan pattern is kind of a big circle and it goes on, it's kind of like, looks like it's spitting out big uh, drops and it looks like real heavy orange peel going on. Of course, that's going to mean you, mean you need to increase your air pressure. And if you're spraying and it's just uh, overspray going all everywhere and maybe even coming back and landing on there, giving it kind of a dry appearance, you know, that's too much air pressure. So you need to turn it down. So that's kind of something to help you in that range to your spraying technique to help you set it to where you need it. Now, something else to keep in mind, too. Uh, you usually are going to have a gauge right here and kind of, you know, instead of having all the, you know, adjusting it right here, go ahead and go to your wall uh, gauge where it's there and set it kind of above, just a little bit above of what you need here. So example, uh, max is 24. So if you set it at the wall at 30, uh, that will be less adjustment you have to do on your gauge. And that'll do a couple of things. Uh, for one, if you have it open, you know, set at the wall closer to what it's supposed to be, that's going to be a less adjustment you have to do here. And it's just going to allow better airflow through the gun. It's going to give you better results. And another thing it does, and I've seen this mistake a lot, if you, if you have it, if you're using a gauge, uh, maybe you're in between coats, you need to refill or, or whatever, and you bump that gauge a little bit and you're not rechecking it every time you go to spray and you start spraying, you know, well, the, the pressure got set. And especially if you're new to spraying, it might take you half the panel or a complete panel to figure out what's going on. And, and what had happened is you hit that gauge and it's uh, set to different air pressure. So if you have it set at the wall closer to that, you've got a lot more room to, uh, for, to set the gauge at. You know, if you knock it a little bit, it's not going to set reset the PSI so dramatic like that. So, yeah. Try to have it closer set at the wall to what you're using here and set it that way. So, yeah, on this Prolite, 20 to 24. Now, another gun that we have, and what we use this one for is waterborne base, but it's a base coat. You could use solvent with it. And uh, this uses an HVLP cap as well. This is HVLP 20, a AV20, it says. It don't have the max on here, but... I don't know if you can see that. But on that one, it says, uh, if you look at their technical data sheet, has a little bit wider range, 22. Let's see. Or 20, no, 20 to 24. Yeah. I've got all these. Make sure I'm looking at the right one here. This is the HV20. No, yeah, I was looking at the wrong one. Um, with this one, with the HV30, that's no, the HV20. Well, I had so many papers, I got them all mixed up. Yeah, that's it. So it says on the, uh, for the HV20, 14 to 18. So it's a little bit lower pressure. So if you're using this one, it recommends 14 to 18 at the inlet. And, uh, you know, that'll get your 10 PSI at the air cap. So they have another gun as, as well. I don't have one of those for our clear coat. We use an Iwata, but I would like to get one and try it. But it's a copper gun. And it's designed for clear coat only. And again, if you're just doing a couple of jobs, you, you know, you're probably not going to have a dedicated spray gun for every application. But if you're spraying more than that, it is a good idea. You know, for clear coat especially, if you don't clean that gun real well, you know, let's say you, you sprayed some material through a, a base gun and then you're spraying clear coat, well, a chunk of color, some type of pigment, you know, 
comes out of that gun if you didn't clean it real good you know you'll see it in a clear coat but um but again if you if you're just a you know diy doing it yourself you know one gun you can you can do all three applications with one gun uh usually for primer sealer uh base coat clear coat you know i use a 1.3 or 1.4 you know kind of your preference i like a 1.3 for everything but uh you know it works real well on the i think i've got the sheet on that and again i will put these uh whole tech technical data sheets down in the description again it may be tomorrow you know I'm, this is live right now but tomorrow i'll get these and put a link down to these where you can read these yourself and it gives you a lot of operating you know it gives you uh how to set it up and you know adjust all the settings not just the air pressure see the clear coat gun uses an hv air cap and recommends 20 to 24 psi so basically all these guns anywhere from 18 some you know to 24 you know it's going to kind of be a range you know that you can adjust again if, if uh kind of go by the recommendations and if it's putting on real heavy drops, real heavy orange peel, you know, the air pressure is too low. If it's creating too much overspray, air pressure is too high. So um, let's see. Okay, got a couple of questions on here. Since I didn't give any novocation, I didn't know if anybody would make it or not. But let's see, Kurt Thacker, what's the best PSI to shoot base coat, nascent and clear coat? Um actually i was answering your question live here that's that's uh i had a that's the reason i was doing this live video is answering you que your question that you'd asked a little bit earlier so uh again that uh, probably that 18 to 24 if you're using hvlp uh do you know what kind of spray gun you're using if it's hvlp or you know the traditional type gun because that's going to make a big difference um if it's a if it's a traditional gun and not HVLP, it's going to require a lot more pressure, you know, inlet pressure right there. So, um, I have the cop. Okay. So the 88 Technica 600 says, I have the copper Techna use it for base and clear. Um, that is the one you got the one that I haven't tried. I really want to try that one. Um, I've got the pro light. I've got the, uh, the base gun, but I do want that copper. Uh, and I haven't got to try that one. I would like to get one of those and make it a dedicated clear gun. Again, just like you said, you can use it for base and clear. Uh, but, you know, if you can have a dedicated for each, you know, that's better. But uh, what what do you think about that gun? Um, that copper gun. Okay, Kurt Thacker says it's a HVLP. So yeah, that's going to fall back into that category where you know it's going to be that ten pipe PSI at the air cap, cap, and it's going to depend on the gun. You know, the manufacturer like Iwata, you know, their air pressure sometimes are a little lower than others. Sada may be a little higher. Uh, you kind of know the ranges ranges of the Techna. You know, from between these these three guns, it's anywhere from eighteen to twenty four with HVLP. You know, air caps. So um so that might be a range to start trying you know anywhere from let's say 18 to to 25 psi i don't know what gun you have but then kind of go from that you know is it spraying real orange pilly you know do some some test patterns or is it have a real you know too much overspray and what that'll cause i mean it'll go so much overspray it'll be a lot of build up and as you're paying you'll come back and land on top and kind of give it a a dry appearance you know because it's that clear coat is or whatever is drying before it's the surface again so also another thing to look for the air pressure is too high uh it'll be heavy on top and heavy on bottom kind of like a figure eight so you're going to have a, a kind of like a ball on top you know come in and then back out that's that if that's happening that is too much air pressure and you need to reduce it to get that pattern like you're looking for and again, if it's too, kind of a balled up in the center, that's too low of air pressure. So that's some different things to look for. Let's see. 
the 88 Tecna 600 spray most like deflete single stage at around 23 24 psi at the gun okay so uh he uses that uh that copper gun and he shoots it at 23 to 24 and uh, i apologize that i've got i'm kind of on a small laptop here some my eyes ain't the best i'm kind of having to look kind of hard to read some of these so um again i you know i didn't really know if i gave anybody a notification to find this or not let's see orlando Orlando says, what do you think about the 3M disposable caps? You know, those aren't bad. I, I do like those, and especially, you know, because I teach at a college, and uh, you may have a student, you know, not tell you about this and leave it sitting somewhere, and I'm sure you all know how bad, that, especially like clear coat or something catalyzed, and you didn't find out about it. I mean, that is a job to clean that gun, and uh, if uh, – you know, those 3M guns, I mean, they spray good. If they start spraying bad, you know, just replace it. And uh, that, that that air cap. And they've got they've got quite a few. I think a 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. I know like 1.6 for primer. I mean, I, th I think they can go up to 1.2.0. Uh, so they've got a lot of air caps. But I like that. And you can get quite a few sprays is out of one air cap it's not like you have to throw it away each time you can clean it out it'll last quite a few sprays no but i like those they spray good and like i said if they are start not spraying well usually you just replace that with a new one it's like you got a brand new gun again we do use those at the college too so uh no they, I, I like them i like the 3m guns they, let's see the 88 says, I love the Technic gun. I think I've been saying that wrong. Again, I'm going to have to get my bifocals to read this little small screen. But uh, Okay, Kurt comes back and says, uh, let the jokes begin. Be be begin. Use the Purple, Har or Purple Harbor Freight. Did two jobs. Came pretty smooth. Some of the orange peel, but not much. I started at 28, maybe too much PSI. Um, that's one I don't know much about is the, the Harbor Freight guns. I mean, I'm sure some of those guns are, you know, you can you can get a good, I mean, you said it came out, you, you know, you're doing pretty good with it. But yeah, if it's HVLP, 28 might be too high. Uh, yeah, tr try spraying. Did you notice a bit of it spraying heavy on top and bottom or anything like that? Um if, you know that that would be indicate that it's too much um but again i do not know you know that much about those guns um and hey you know it's you know, it's you know you can do whatever you can afford you know that's what you can use and i know harbor freight's got some less expensive equipment you know i've, I've got tools from there before you know but uh but as far as spray guns i don't know anything about those um so, yeah, you're just going to have to play with that, get a test pattern and kind of look for, you know, maybe start with 24 PSI and see if that looks orange pilly. If the drops are coming out real large, you know, you know, that's too low. If it's over, over atomizing and you just got overspray going everywhere, you know, that's too much. Did it come out looking kind of dry or real orange pilling? You know, that might kind of tell you. You know which way to go and again probably won't do this on the test panel you know before you start spraying hmm um oj pow for God's sake, says, where is Brian? He really makes this channel. Well, I'm not sure who Brian is, so who, who is Brian? Brian uh, trying to think back. I mean, I've had different people on this channel, but I don't remember Brian. Yeah. 
Let's see, uh, Himron John, uh, Johns says, hi. Hey, how you doing? Glad you made it to this video. Uh, Al Johnson says, what's wrong if it comes out dry? Uh, a lot of times if it comes out kind of dry, a couple things, the PSI was too heavy, too high, and it's just causing too much overspray, and it's coming back and landing on top. Another thing is if you're too far back, and you, you know, you're not getting good coverage, a lot of times that kind of give it a dry appearance, you know, to, to get it that wet look, you know, you, you need to get closer and not have too much air pressure, you know, to make it really wet and that'll help with that. See, I started painting with the Binks model number seven. Well, I did too. I, I remember that guy. I remember that guy. That's a, uh, I guess we're doing a little telltale on each other. So, uh, they, they, they did spray good. I mean, they spray, you know, of course, with all the, the laws with VOCs, even the, the old products like the old clears and stuff seems to, to, to really lay down a lot better than these newer ones. But, uh, yeah, Binks number seven, man, that was the gun to have, you know, that was a long time ago. Uh, I do remember that had one of those too. Okay, yeah. Uh, also, uh, the 88 Katna 600. I'm probably saying that wrong, uh, but uh, he, he also mentioned it could be the wrong, wrong reducer, and that is a, a thing, too. If you're using too fast a reducer, you know, it's drying too fast before it hits the surface, just like too much overspray drying before it hits the surface. But if you're using a, a fast reducer, you know, on a hot day, you know, that could be another cause of, of the dry overspray. So... Yeah, I may have to on the next live video uh, get someone to help me read these or uh, get a bigger screen. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting old, and uh, I'm supposed to wear bifocal glasses, but I just I don't like them. They bother me, so it's kind of hard to, to read up close with this small print like this. So, Okay, Al Johnson says, what happened? if the spray booth is too hot well i mean you still got if it's too hot you got to use a reducer you know that that matches that for example if it's a uh, 80 degrees in there and and you use a fast reducer that's going to be the same results as you know the temperatures you know regularly 80 degrees so whatever the the booth temperature is that's where you need to that's the reducer that you need to use so um All right. Uh, nice seeing you. I'm glad. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, uh, I'll try to do another one of these soon and hopefully I can kind of get this going a little bit better. This is kind of a rough one. Uh, like I said, I was going to start, try to start doing these the first of the year, had some problems with the internet upgrade on that. So, uh, hopefully this one will turn out better and we'll see. And then I'll start learning the system more and how to schedule these and all that, you know? So I kind of like the, the idea of, of doing these live, you know, it's kind of a, good that I get to see your comments right here as you're, as you're asking them. But yeah, I need to do something a little bit different with this, I think, so I can read these better, but um, maybe I'll have to get those bifocals, but you know, that not bifocals, there's transitional lenses or whatever, but man, those, I, I just can't get used to those. Uh, they, they don't work that good. So yeah, I'm that age where I need that. that so, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll kind of see how it turns out. And again, I will put all these, uh, these technical data sheets on these three guns on the pro light on the base gun and the clear gun for these, these, these three guns. I will put those down in the descriptions. Check, you check back tomorrow. I'll be tomorrow before I get that done, but I'll put those in there and that gives you how to set up the gun, you know, the air pressure fan pattern fluid and all that and gives you parts lists, names of all the parts, you know, it's real good to look through it and just kind of read that before you actually spray if you're not familiar with a spray gun. But I think these are great guns. And again, like I said, I didn't survey on, on my YouTube channel and this is the number one preferred gun uh, by far. So and uh, and I like, a like them, too. I think I'm going to kind of move towards these for everything, even my clear gun. I mean, we we 
we're using a lot of Awadas, but I, I think the students and myself are starting to lean towards these. So, but I do want to try one of those copper guns and see how that works. So anyway, thanks for watching this video and uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, close it off for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.